Okay, so picking up part two of homework 2-3, um, I left off most of the way through this, right? So we had set up our system of equations. Again, the key point was because it was a, an angle of 45 degrees, we know that cosine of 45 and sine of 45 are actually equal. And that allows me to do a substitution down here. So all I did was I plugged in my cosine function uh, instead of this. So I had V cosine 45 equals 200 over T, and then I substituted that in in place of this guy right here. So then solving this the rest of the way out, well, I get 400 over t equals 9.8t. So then solving for t, right, I would get uh, 400 equals 9.8t squared, and then solving for t. So dividing by 9.8 and then square rooting. I get the time to be about 6.39, okay, so 6.39 seconds. It wanted us, though, to find the initial velocity of the object. And so now that I have the time, you could really come back to either one of these two equations that we had set up. But I'm just going to jump right up to this guy. So my velocity, v cosine 45, equals 200 over uh, 6.39. And then just solving for v, which, keep in mind, this v actually represents the entire uh, hypotenuse, right? The cosine is taking care of the fact that it's the x component. But that v represents the magnitude of the whole hypotenuse. So as I solve for this v, I am finding my total answer. Um, so anyway, 200 divided by 6.39, and then dividing that by cosine of 45 as well. And that's where I got my answer of 44.3 meters per second. Now obviously it's always a good idea if you have time to uh, double check and make sure this answer actually makes sense. So you could plug it back in and see how long does it take to reach the highest point, how far would it go horizontally during that period, and so on and so forth. So it's not a bad idea to double check that if you can. Um, but moving on. Right, so the next question, uh, again a pretty standard question. Most of us from last year hopefully remember how to do this one. Um, but in case you don't, obviously I'll work it out and I will write down the correct answer here in just a second. Um, let me get my table drawn first. So we've got our table with uneven legs and if you think you got this right, the speed was 20.2 meters per second for part A and then the distance was 12.8. So if you feel like you got those confidently, feel free to jump ahead. But anyway, the puck is moving off the table. It is moving at a constant horizontal velocity, an initial velocity of 20.0 meters per second. And then over here, this is point A where it leaves the table, right? They're saying that's point A. Okay. The height of the table, so we'll assume the height of the longer leg as I've drawn it, is 2 meters. Um, and then they ask what is the speed as it hits the ground and what is the distance from point A. So this puck's going to slide off the table, it's going to hit the ground, I want to find its speed right here. Well the big concept for part A that you have to be comfortable with is when it hits the ground it's going to have both a horizontal and a vertical component of the velocity. Right? The good news is we know that it's still going to be moving at 20.0 meters per second horizontally because they say there's no air resistance, there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So really the only thing I have to find is my final vertical velocity so that I can then do my Pythagorean theorem. So to do that, not terribly difficult. My initial vertical velocity is 0. My acceleration is 9.8. And my height is delta y equals 2. So using those measurements, I can find my final vertical velocity. So I'm just going to use v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a delta x. So plugging in those measurements, right, which I know you guys can do, plugging in those measurements, I find the final vertical velocity to be about 2.50 meters per second. So again, keep in mind, this is not my total answer. This just tells me how fast it's moving downward when it hits the ground. This is just the vertical component as it hits the ground. So to then actually find my answer for part A, right? I know that it's moving horizontally at 20 meters per second. I know that it's moving downward at 2.50 meters per second. I want to find the speed, which is the magnitude of my hypotenuse, right? So a simple Pythagorean theorem there, and that's where I got my 20.2. Okay, so 20.2 meters per second, that's how fast it would look like that puck is actually moving once it hits the ground. Um, and, and again, take your time with this, but hopefully that part, that first one, wasn't too bad. It's very similar to the types of questions we would see in AP Physics 1, or even hopefully in regular Physics 1, right? So nothing too crazy there. Part B, the distance between point A and where the puck hits the ground. Now, I did interpret this as the distance that it travels horizontally. If you had interpreted that as the uh, hypotenuse of that, that is fine. I will make sure, obviously, on any test or quizzes, it's absolutely clear which one I want. Uh, 
but I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm looking for the delta x. So I'm looking for my horizontal displacement. So in order to find my horizontal displacement, the only two measurements I need, right, if I'm looking for delta x, I need to know what's my horizontal velocity and what's the time that it's in the air. Well, I already know my horizontal velocity because it's a constant 20 meters per second. So I just need to figure out the time that it's in the air. Well, I jump right back to my vertical measurements, right? So if I use my delta y equals 2, my initial velocity of 0, and my acceleration of 9.8, I can find my time by doing the equation we've used several times right at this point. So setting up this equation and then solving from here. So 2 equals 1 half 9.8 t squared. And then solving for t, obviously it's a pretty short period of time. You're dividing 2 by something bigger than 2. Um, I end up getting about 0 0.639, 0 0.64, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so you could round it off at 0.64 if you wanted. You could even round it off probably right to 0.6. Actually, it uses three sig figs, so this is probably good. Um, but anyway, we've got our time, and now that we have our time, it's easy enough to find my distance. Right? My distance would be my velocity times my time, so 20 times 0.639. And that's where I got my answer of about 12.8 meters. So again, this represents the horizontal displacement of the puck as it strikes the ground. Now, if you wanted to find the hypotenuse, you would just do 12.8 squared plus 2, which is the height of the table squared, and then the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and you could answer that as well for this particular problem. Okay, so question 7 here, a fairly complex setup, although the question itself, hopefully, you guys didn't find it to be that bad. Um, they're asking us for what's the magnitude of the velocity 21 seconds after it's fired. So if I want the magnitude of the velocity, again, all I have to really do is find my x and my y components, and then I'm not even worried about the angle. I'm just going to find the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Well, the good news is I know my x component, right? Air resistance, they tell me, is negligible. Um, and so my x component with the double equal sign in here, right? My x component is still 60 meters per second. And so I've got half the work done. That was a pretty easy half to do, but I've got half of what I need, right? So this is where I just make up an answer for Vy, and I call it a day, right? Um, but no, it's, it's not terribly tough to solve this part, right? So let's start thinking about our vertical measurements. Well, they tell me my initial vertical velocity is 175. I know my acceleration is negative 9.80 meters per second squared, and I am notice defining that as a negative since I've defined this as a positive 175 since it was going upward um, and then they give me the time they tell me 21 seconds later and that's actually the nicest thing they can do for me because I don't have to worry about breaking it up at the top if they give me the time I can use any of my kinematics equations and I can just solve for the velocity at whatever point in time I want so I'm looking for the final velocity the final vertical velocity after 21 seconds well, I'm just going to use my velocity as a function of time right I'm just going to use VOTAP so if I want to find my final velocity as a function of time, well, again, I know this is a positive 175 minus 9.8 and times 40. Actually, excuse me, not 40, times 21. Um, so all I have to do then is plug in 21 and then solve from here. Okay, so just calculating that out. And we get that the uh, final velocity after 21 seconds would be negative 30.8. So about negative 30.8 meters per second. And again, the negative just tells me it's going down. This actually does for what it's worth tell me a lot, right? I know that the initial velocity was 175. I know that it's now negative 30.8, but it's not yet as big as 175. And so what that tells me then is it's somewhere up here, right? So after 21 seconds, the object is actually still somewhere up here because it's not yet reached the negative 175. So I know it's not to this point. Again, that's not really relevant for this question, but it is good to be able to kind of think your way through that part should it, should it be relevant, should you need it. Um, but anyway, so I've got my two components. At this point, hopefully, you guys all agree it's pretty easy. If I want to find the magnitude of the velocity, I simply build my right triangle. So it's going 60 meters per second horizontally. It's going 30.8 downward. And then I have to find my hypotenuse for the magnitude of my velocity. Okay, so it doesn't even ask for the angle. It simplifies it a little bit. So then in solving for the magnitude, I get that to be about 67.4 meters per second. Okay, so. Hopefully this one wasn't terribly bad, um, maybe a little bit tricky at first because you can, you don't have to break it up halfway, although you could have figured out how long it takes to go to the top and then just find, found the remaining time from 21 seconds to figure out how far down the path it's gone. But obviously this pretty pretty simple approach if you can keep it this easy. Um, and then finally we'll get to the last question here.
Okay, so on question eight, I obviously messed up. I meant to give you guys the graphs. Um, I did not do so, so I apologize for that, but the graphs are on page 110 of your textbook. It's question nine, so it's the two graphs down there with question nine. So if you haven't yet tried this with those graphs, please pause this, try it first with the graphs, because I think if you guys take your time, hopefully this question is not too bad. Uh, but I'll, I'll work on from this point, assuming that you have done so. Okay, so again, I'm referencing the graphs as I go through. I know they're not actually on my page, but uh, have those out and follow along if you need to. Right? You can also do that through the Mastering website if you just go to your electronic book as well. Okay, so part A here wants me to make a position graph, um, a trajectory, right, for the first five seconds. So that's where, again, I need to make my vertical displacement versus my horizontal displacement graph. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to make a T, X, and Y table. So I'm going to go from 0 to uh, 5 seconds, because they want me to do the first 5 seconds of the motion. And I know at 0, both of those graphs uh, make it very clear that this object is just starting at 0. Um, and in fact, just based on the fact that we're going to choose a starting point. Um, and then from there, what I'm actually doing as I look at those graphs, so the, the place that I'm going to get these numbers from, so I'm just looking at the area under the curve. And the only one that's kind of tricky is when you look at your graph for the x displacement, for the x velocity, I should say. Um, if you look at that graph, it goes up to uh, 40 meters per second after 5 seconds. And because it's a straight line, what that tells me is the slope is 8 meters per second. So after every second, it's gone up 8, and then 16, and then 24, and then 32, and then 40. So that's where I'm getting these numbers from. But anyway, all I'm doing for the, for the times then is after one second, because it's a velocity versus time graph, I'm finding the displacement of that area. So again, this would be one half of one times eight, which is four. Now the y displacement is much nicer because that graph is a constant function. So it's constantly moving at 30 meters per second, so every second it's going up by 30 meters, right? So hopefully the y coordinates aren't terribly difficult uh, to find, since it's just moving at that constant. Again, and the X ones aren't too bad either. Just make sure you're finding your displacement right after that given period of time. So after two seconds, it's now a one half times two times 16, right? And so when I do that, I get 16. Um, and then for three seconds, I get 36. And for four seconds, 64. And five seconds, 100. Actually, it's kind of interesting to notice. Look at all of these numbers and see what maybe the pattern that you notice is. It's something to think about. Um, but anyway, I won't get into that now. Um, what I do, what I am going to do, right, is just then label. So I'm going to go up by maybe 30s here just so I can get all the way up to 150, right? So I went up by 30s, and I'm not going to take a terribly long time to do this because I don't want to waste your time. And then I'm going to go up here by maybe um, 10s or so. Okay, so let's even throw a couple more tick marks in here. So I'm just going up by 10s, right? So again, I'm not terribly worried about this, but... I know you guys can plot the point. So after 0, 0, it's here. And then when we're 4 meters in the horizontal displacement, we're now 30 meters up here. Then we're 16 and 60, and so on and so forth. So again, just take your time and plot these points. I know you guys can plot these points. I know my graph is far from perfect in terms of spacing, but I don't want to waste your time on this either. Okay. So what you should start to notice is, yes, it does have kind of that curve, right? It does follow something more or less a curve of that path. Okay, so there's my uh, there's my projectile, right? There's my trajectory motion um, for this projectile. So then for part B, in which direction is the puck moving at two seconds? Well, all I have to do really is, for part B, I have to identify what are the x and the y components of the velocity. Well, if I just look at the graph, I can see that the x component, again, because it was going up by 8 meters per second, is 16 meters per second. And the y component of the velocity is always 30 meters per second. So then to find my direction, I simply build myself a right triangle, right? And I find the angle involved. Okay, so I just build a right triangle, and I find the angle involved. So as you guys are doing that, I'm obviously not there yet, but doing this quickly so I don't run out of time. Over 16, up 30, right? And again, just solving for that angle with respect. And I get theta equals 61.9 degrees above the positive x-axis. And then my third part, what's the distance from the origin? All I have to do for that is the Pythagorean theorem using my final coordinates of 100 and 150. 
right? So just imagine building yourself a triangle there and we get about 180.3 meters.